start the recording now. So again, if we were to title this call, it would be Objection Handling Scripts. What I want to do is talk you through some of the scripts that we are actually going to ask you to uh, internalize. As you know, my script role play internalization process isn't so much to chant the scripts over and over and over and memorize them, which is certainly something I suggest you do, as much as it is understand the message that we're trying to convey. Understand the message behind the words to begin with. Because remember, I didn't study these scripts and then all of a sudden, you know, actually write them down for you. What I did was I actually had a thought process in place, a message I was trying to deliver, and as I would give somebody that message, all I simply did is recorded the words that went with that message. So we want to internalize both the message, become familiar with the words, add your personality, add your tonality, do it the way you do it. We're going to look at some great objections today. Let me just go down the list of what we're going to cover. We are going to cover um, the objection, we want to wait until spring. We're going to cover the objection, well, we might just wait a while and see what happens with the market. It's not really a good time to buy. It's not really a good time to sell. We're going to cover the objection, well, we'll just rent the home then if we don't get our price. Uh, we're going to cover the objection that, you know, all agents are the same. You know, what do you do that's any different? Um, we're going to cover the objection, if you have a buyer, bring them by. You know, if you have a buyer, we're willing to pay a commission. Uh, we're going to look at three of the four types of sellers in terms of script form. So we'll tell you, you know, and look at what to say to a buyer that's looking to purchase another home, um, a seller that's cashing out, or a buyer that's looking to buy a more expensive home. So we are just going to run through some scripts today. Uh, I'll try to give you some feedback or some ideas as to what we're thinking. Then I will send everybody on the call a copy of all the scripts. Now, if you're listening to this by audio and it's not live, then obviously email me at coachbobfitzgerald at gmail.com and we'll make sure that you get all the scripts as well. So let's go ahead and look at the objection. We're going to wait till spring. Now, before I jump into the scripts, I want you to notice there's going to be a common theme. The first theme when I'm handling an objection is always going to be to repeat and validate what they say. Um, on our basic objection handling audio part one, objection handling audio part two, you'll see the foundation of the objection handling sequence. You're more than welcome to download those audios and listen to those as well. But you're going to see the theme that I teach in those classes as we go through the scripts. We're going to align ourselves with them. We're going to get on their team, on their side, um, by validating and appreciating. You're also going to find out that I'm going to always try to ask a lot of questions. After I get an objection, I'm usually going to qualify the objection and try to get a feel for what they're thinking, and then I'm going to give them some information, and then I'm going to ask a few more questions. So see if you don't notice that pattern as we go. So somebody says, well, Bob, we want to wait until spring then. Well, here's what the script says. Well, listen, okay, you know, so you're thinking about waiting until spring. I understand. A lot of sellers have decided to go in that direction. So the first thing I'm going to do is validate them. All right, so you're thinking about waiting until spring. I appreciate that. Um, I understand a lot of sellers have decided to go in that direction. Now we're on the same team. So now I'm going to ask a question. Mr. Seller, what were you hoping to accomplish by waiting until spring? Now, I know what they're hoping to accomplish. They know, you know that they're hoping to accomplish a better market, better prices, but I need to understand that selling isn't telling. Selling is asking questions. So I want them to go through a self-discovery process. So the first thing I want them to do is start to verbalize what they're hoping to accomplish. So what were you hoping to accomplish by waiting until spring? Well, you know, we were hoping, you know, the market's going to get better. Maybe we'll get, you know, we'll get more activity in the spring. Obviously, there's a lot more buyers in the spring. You're going to hear a lot of different things at that point. So now I'm going to ask another question. Well, let me ask you this. How familiar are you with the condition of today's real estate market? So once they've told me what they were trying to accomplish, I'm going to ask them how familiar they are with today's real estate market. You know, um, if they give me some answers, I'm going to listen. If they're not sure, that's okay too. In both cases, I'm going to go to where I pick up next. Well, then as you know, the listing inventory has continued to increase and there are actually more homes for sale than there are new buyers coming into the market. What do you think that will do to prices in the spring? So here's what we're going to do. Well, as you know then, or as you may know, or as you may not know, depending on how they handled answered that question, the listing inventory has continued to increase. And there are actually a lot more homes for sale than there are new buyers for these homes. What do you think that'll do to prices in the spring? Now, it's kind of hard to argue with that. 
You know, and one of the other things that you'll notice in a live role play is I'm not afraid to repeat myself. What that means is that, well, you know, we're not sure. Well, you know, listen, if the listing inventory continues to rise, if there are more and more homes for sale and fewer and fewer buyers to purchase those homes, what kind of impact do you think that'll have on prices? Well, I guess prices will probably go down. You know, I'm not afraid to ask a second time if I don't get an answer or they deflect the question the first time. So keep that in mind too. Well, next point right here on the script says, well, listen, John, right now we have a 10 month supply of inventory. And that means if not a single home were listed in the next 10 months, we have enough inventory to last until September. So considering the fact there are more homes coming on the market than are actually selling each month, what are the chances the market will actually appreciate in March? Okay, so the first thing we said is, how familiar are you with today's real estate market? Well, the message is, well, with inventory increasing and the number of homes, you know, for those buyers decreasing, what kind of impact do you think that'll have on prices? Well, right now, we've already got a 10-month supply of inventory, which means if not a single home were listed in the next 10 months, we have enough inventory to last until September. So considering the fact that homes are coming on the market, you know, as we speak, you know, there are more homes coming on the market as we speak than are actual, you know, buyers to purchase those homes. What are the chances the market will actually appreciate in the spring? You know, somebody says, well, I think it'll get better. You know, well, is that wishful thinking or do you have a reason to believe that? You know, and this is what you're going to see on the script. So now where it says other arguments, you'll see that it says, well, everybody has the same idea you do. You know, they plan to list their home in the spring. They're actually going to see a surge of new inventory in the spring, and that's going to cause prices to drop even further, won't it? So if I need to take it a step further, I can bring it a step further. Everybody has the same idea they do. We're probably going to see a surge of new listings in the spring. That will cause prices to drop even further, won't it? You know, and then there's one more argument here if you need it. It's kind of a secondary argument. It says, when we're in a cycle of appreciation, did we ever see prices reverse and come down during the winter? Now think about that for a second, guys and gals. You know, there are agents that believe the property values are going to start to go up in the spring. Let me ask you this. When we were going through the boom, when we were in the appreciation cycle for most of the last decade, did we see prices reverse and start to drop during the winter? Well, now that we're in a correction cycle, what makes you think the market will reverse and appreciate in the spring? So notice that we've asked some questions. I've given you a few other arguments. What we're trying to do is basically help them understand inventory is growing. You know, that's going to have a negative impact on prices. Obviously, we've got enough inventory to last us until summer if nothing else were listed. You know, or is, is it just wishful thinking or do they have a reason to believe the property values are going to get better in the spring. And then it says, go to the closing sequence. The closing sequence, if you don't have it, is a script designed to help you set an appointment with somebody after you've handled their objection. So that's the basic message behind why we'd want to wait till spring. Now, here's the question. Is the message true? Did I say anything slippery? Did I say anything unethical? Did I say anything that wasn't right dead on the money truth? You know, I can speak with confidence because I'm not, you know, trying to pull the wool over somebody's eyes. I'm not using magical closing techniques. I'm not sidestepping the issue. I'm not being slippery at all. I'm just reiterating the facts. I'm asking a few questions, making a few statements, you know, educating a person, and then helping them come to a conclusion that shows them they're better off selling now than waiting until spring. How about this one? You know, we just want to wait and see what happens in the market. Or now's not a good time to buy. Or now's not a good time to sell. Basic objection is the market is not great. It's a bad market that we're in. So we always start with a validation and a, an appreciation. So you'll see that first and foremost. It says, well, I understand why you'd feel that way. In fact, a lot of people feel the same way. Well, we're just going to wait and see what happens. Well, listen, John, I understand why you'd feel that way. A lot of people actually feel the same way. Now we're on the same, same team. We've aligned with them. So, John, let me ask you a question. If the market was better and you did sell the home, where would you go next? Now I'm going to go back to their hypothetical motivation. Before I even begin to deal with the objection, I want to put them in a hypothetical situation. I'm going to take the objection off the table. If the market were better and you were able to sell the home, where would you go next? I need to get them talking about what the original motivation for the move was. Okay, so if I can't dig up the original motivation, it's difficult to go forward. So they start telling me a little bit about the original motivation for the move, and then 
I go through A, B, C, and D here, and A is this. Well, listen, John, the truth is the market is much better than most people think, and now is a great time to either buy or sell a home. Um, John, buyers have more choices than ever before, and there's some great values out there right now. And for sellers, prices are a lot better right now than they're going to be in the future, so this might be the best time to protect your equity. John, if you could sell your home and find a great value, you know, and end up better off financially, would you consider that option? Watch, if it's a seller, you know, I'm going to get the message out. And the message, first of all, is the truth is the market is a lot better right now than most people think. In fact, now is a great time to buy or sell a home. Maybe you won't say great. Maybe you can say good time to buy or sell a home. For buyers, they have more choices than ever before, and there's some amazing values out in the market right now. For sellers, prices are better than they're going to be next year. You know, so this is the time to protect your equity. So now the question for a seller, if you could sell your home and find a great value on the other end and basically end up better off financially, would you consider that option? If you could sell the home and still end up okay financially, would you consider the option? And then obviously we'll have to set an appointment, go talk to them about the four different types of sellers, or we might have to even get into the four different types of sellers on this call. If they were a buyer, well, John, if we could find the perfect house for you and your family, and you could purchase it at a price that made sense, it'd be great investment, would you still consider that option? So at this point, you're going to go to the closing sequence, so you'll go to the four different types of sellers. So what do we do here? You know, we validated the fact that they think the market is not good. We took them back to why originally they wanted to sell or buy to begin with. We said the truth of the matter is it's a much better market than most people think. Buyers have more choices than ever. There's great values. Sellers are going to get better prices than we're looking at next year. The bottom line is if you could actually sell your home and find a great value and end up better off financially, would you consider that option? Then you'll go to the closing sequence. Or the buyer side, if we could find the perfect home for your family and you could purchase it at a price that made sense, it'd be a good investment, you know, would you still consider that option? And then you go to the closing sequence. So you see where we're going with this and you'll start to notice the repetition as we go. All right, let's look at this one. Well, we're going to rent the home. You know, I mean, based on today's market, you know, we'll stay, we'll just rent the home if we have to. So the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is validate and appreciate them. Okay, so you're thinking of renting to excuse me. Okay, so you're thinking of renting the home as an option. Now, I understand. A lot of sellers have decided to go in that direction. Just get in alignment with them. Oh, so you're thinking of renting the home as an option. Well, I appreciate that. A lot of sellers have decided to do that. So now ask a question. John, have you ever rented a home before? Do you have much experience with being a landlord? See, what are the challenges? You know, I mean, they thinking, well, maybe I'll rent. I can't get my price right now. First of all, they're thinking they rent for a little while. They're not realizing how long they're going to have to rent. You know, and then a lot of times people think renting is such a simple option. If they're investors or if they're landlords, if they've rented before, they'll probably rent again. And it's a circumstance more than it is an objection. But what I want to do is educate these people. So I'm going to ask them, have you ever rented a home before? Do you have much experience with being a landlord? And I like the word landlord. It's one of the words I wish you'd leave in the script as you customize these to be your own message. You know, because landlord has a negative connotation attached to it. Well, you know, we've, you know, we rented a home once in the past. Well, you know, have you considered some of the challenges with renting a home? I mean, John, first of all, there's finding qualified renters. That's not nearly as easy as a lot of people think. Collecting rents, collecting them on time is a whole other issue, as you know, if you've had a rental in the past. Um, a lot of times people don't think about dealing with all the problems and the repairs. And at this point, you'll see in the script, it says, tell a true story. If you've got a rental nightmare story about a water heater that broke in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve kind of thing, it's a great opportunity to give them a quick true story. You know, and then ultimately D it says, you know, and then a lot of people don't realize, you know, renters tend not to take care of properties the way homeowners would. And, you know, there's a potential destruction of the property. You know, so let me ask you a question, John, number four. Are you clear that you need to rent the home for at least two or three years? Have you thought about that? Now, usually they haven't thought that it was going to be that long of a process. So A says, well, right now we have a 10-month supply of inventory. That means if not a single home were listed in the next 10 months, it would take until September just to sell the homes that are on the market. We're at least 12 to 18 months away from hitting the bottom. We're another 12 to 18 months away from selling off the excess inventory before we even begin to see prices go up. 
Don't you think it might be better for you and your family just to accept reality now and move on with your life? And then I'll go to the closing sequence again. So you'll go ahead and see these things right on the script. So I'm not necessarily trying to just give you the words as much as I am trying to give you the message behind the words. But obviously you can see script by script you want to spend some time to go through you know, the message that we're trying to deliver. So what's the message for a rental? You know, hey, it seems like an easy option, but have you ever done it before? You know, have you considered the challenges? Finding renters, collecting the rents on time, dealing with problems, the property's destroyed, and along the way, have you thought about the fact that this could be a three to five year process? You know, I mean, right now we've got a 10 month supply of inventory. So if nothing else were listed in the next 10 months, we have enough to take us through next year. It's looking at at least 12 to 18 months, in some cases, 18 to 24 months down, another 18 to 24 months up. I mean, wouldn't it be better simply to cut your losses now and move on with your life? So this is the message behind how we'll try to get somebody to consider that selling might be better for them than renting. How about this objection? Well, you know, your agents are all the same. I mean, you're calling expireds, you're calling FISBOs, you know, you get the objection. Well, you guys are all the same anyway. So here's how we handle that. Always validate and appreciate, right? Always, you know, align with them. Well, listen, I understand why you feel that way. In fact, a lot of people feel the same way. You know, what a surprise. You know, they say, well, you're all the same. Well, you know, I appreciate why you'd feel that way. In fact, a lot of people feel the same way. Now I'm going to ask a question, as I always do. You know, let me ask you this, though. How familiar are you with the condition of today's real estate market? Okay, because what I'm going to do is I'm about to prove to them that we're not all the same. But I'm going to do it through questions. How familiar are you with the condition of today's real estate market? You know, and we let them answer. Well, as you know, there aren't nearly enough buyers for all the homes that are listed for sale. In fact, right now in Richmond, Virginia, there are only one out of every 10 homes listed in the MLS will actually sell on a month-to-month -month basis. Does it surprise you to know that most of the homes listed for sale don't sell on a month-to-month -month basis? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create the negative, and you'll see why in just a moment. Well, then, as you know, there aren't nearly enough buyers for all the homes that are listed for sale. In fact, only one out of every 10 homes listed in the MLS will actually sell. So does it surprise you to know that most of the homes listed don't sell month in and month out? Well, yeah, no, it doesn't surprise us. Ours didn't sell. So listen, John, the agents who are getting their listings sold in today's market are obviously doing something different. Are you familiar with the techniques we used to actually sell homes in this type of high inventory market? Now, I could even throw a statistic in there. The agents who are getting their listings sold in this type of market are obviously doing something different. There were over a 1,000 sales in the last 30 days. Are you familiar with the techniques we use to actually get homes sold in this high inventory market? And then it says go to the closing sequence or go to the four types of sellers, depending on what you're dealing with or where you go with next. So the closing sequence, obviously, is a closing technique. Again, if you don't have that, just email me that, and I'll go ahead and send that script to everybody as well. So watch. This is how we're going to deal with the fact that we're not all the same. Now, I could throw in, you know, what, what do you do for a living and try to get him to agree that even with his job, there are people that do it well and people that don't. But the bottom line is this. We are all the same for the most part because most of the listings aren't selling. But there's a handful that are, and those agents are obviously doing something different. And what we're doing different, the techniques we use to get homes sold, starting with pricing strategy, price reductions, communication, and honesty, are the reasons why you know, you're in this situation because you didn't have an agent that did that the last time. So I'm going to let the very fact that a 1,000 homes are selling be the evidence that we're not all the same. The question is, what is it going to take to find the right person? Are you familiar with the techniques we use to actually get homes sold in this type of high inventory market? And again, go to the closing sequence, go to the four types of sellers. Okay, well, how about this one? Did you have a buyer for the home? If you have a buyer, bring them by. You know, if you have a buyer, we're willing to pay a commission. You know, you'll run into that with an expired who just wants to take a break. You'll run into that with a for sale by owner quite often. 
You know, and you know, the old approach, the approach I used to use even as an agent was, well, I'm not really sure. I haven't had a chance to see the home yet and just deflect the question and go right into the rest of my script. And that was real effective because a lot of times they weren't necessarily looking, you know, for an answer to that question. It was just a stall. And so if they said, well, if you have a buyer, bring them by, you know, I say, well, listen, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact you're willing to cooperate. Let me ask you this. If we had actually sold the home for you, where would you go next? Would you stay local or would you leave the area? And I just pick up right in the script wherever I left off. Okay, but one of the things I've tried to do with the message that we're conveying in today's market is give you truth, give you nuggets of truth that you can use to cause somebody to really see the light. So you could passively just say, you know, well, I'm not sure I haven't had a chance to see the home yet, but if I did, you know, where would you go next? And you could pick up where you left off or here's what the script is going to convey as I'm reading it now. So do you have a buyer for the home or if you have a buyer, bring them by. So I'll start by aligning with them as always by appreciating and validating. Okay, great. So if we had a buyer then, you'd be willing to cooperate? Well, yeah, we'll cooperate. Okay, great. I appreciate that. Hey, John, how familiar are you with the condition of today's real estate market? Notice I come back with a question. Well, Bob, why do you keep coming back with that question? Because it's the relevant question. In most cases, we're educating them as to some reality of the market, and that's why they need to list the home, not just sit back and wait till I stop by with a buyer. So how familiar are you with the condition of today's real estate market? Well, you know, we listen to whatever they say, and then you'll see A, B, C, D, and E. Well, A says, well, then, as you know, John, there aren't nearly enough buyers for all the homes that are listed for sale. Now, remember, they said, do you have a buyer for my home? If you have a buyer, bring them by. And the first thing I'm conveying is, then, as you know, there aren't nearly enough buyers for all the homes listed for sale. In fact, only one out of every 10 homes that's listed in MLS will actually sell each month. Now, this is a great future pace because with for sale by owners, what do they want to do next? First, they try to cut the commission completely, you know, and then they try to discount the commission with an agent that simply puts it in MLS. You know, well, regardless of the market that you're in right now, the bottom line is, you know, the majority of the listings in MLS don't sell each month. So obviously MLS is no more a magic pill to getting a listing sold than their sign, their open house, and their ad was. So not only am I delivering information, I'm also preempting a future objection. So in fact, only one out of every 25 homes listed in the multiple listing service here in Atlanta will actually sell each month. Well, in fact, John, only one out of every six homes that's listed in our multiple listing service here in Toronto will actually sell each month. Okay, so we're going to get that. First of all, there aren't nearly enough buyers for all the homes that are for sale. John, if you hired me to go out and find a buyer, it could take up to three months of aggressively marketing your home just to find even one buyer that will make a reasonable offer in today's market. Does it surprise you that most of the homes listed for sale don't sell month in and month out? So notice I made a statement. If you hired me, not only are there not nearly enough buyers for all the homes that are for sale, if you went ahead and hired me, forget asking me to stop by with one, if you went and hired me to find a buyer for your home, it could take several months of aggressive marketing just to find even one buyer that'll make a reasonable offer in today's market. Does it surprise you to know that most of the homes listed for sale don't sell month in and month out? Watch, are you familiar with the techniques we use to actually get homes sold in this type of high inventory market? And then we go into the closing sequence. So again, you can see the message we're trying to convey. Not only do I not have a buyer, there aren't nearly enough buyers for the homes that are for sale. You know, and if you hired me to find a buyer, I'm going to be a lot more aggressive than you are for months on end just to try to identify even one buyer that'll give you a reasonable offer. Does that surprise you? Well, then are you familiar with the techniques we'd use to get your home sold in a high inventory market like this? Again, I want you to start to see some common themes or commonality because in a lot of cases, the message is similar, although the objections are different. The next thing I want to cover with you are the four different types of sellers. Um, there's three specific objections or scripts that go with the type of seller they are. So when you get the script, you'll see four types of sellers. The first one is somebody that's buying another home. Now, you've heard me teach on this a million times. If you don't understand the four types of sellers in today's market, it's very difficult to get anywhere with anybody. So this is a core teaching. 
Now, I've taught it enough times. You can listen to it on audio if you like, you know, but this is how we'll put it into words. This is actually the script. So, you know, I work my way into this based at some point of the conversation, and then I say, well, listen, John, you know, I understand that the market can be confusing, but here's the good news. Okay, I always want to bring good news. You know, John, I understand that the market can be confusing. The market can be frustrating. You know, I understand that this process can be grueling, but here's the good news. Okay, although you may have to sell your home at a discount, your plan is to purchase another home, right? Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Well, yeah, we're going to purchase another home. Well, John, do you expect the home that you'll purchase to be priced at a discount compared to last year's values as well? Do you expect the home that you'll purchase to also be priced at a discount compared to times past? So they're going to sell at a discount, but they're also going to buy at a discount. So see, it says, so the good news is that although you'll have to sell at a discount, you're going to buy at a discount as well. So you haven't really lost anything at all. Can I tell you the better news? So let me do that again. Well, listen, the good news then is although you may have to sell at a discount, you know, you're going to be able to buy at a discount, so you haven't really lost any of your equity at all. But can I tell you the better news? Now they want to know what the better news is. So D for a seller, it says the better news. So watch, John, the better news is that when the market does get better and we return to an appreciating cycle, you're, the home that you buy will increase in value just as much as the home that you're in if you sit here, if you decide to stay and wait it out. Watch, the better news is that when the market does get better and we return to an appreciating cycle, the home that you're going to buy will increase in value just as much as your home if you decide to stay and wait it out. So the better news is that you're going to get your money back anyway. There really isn't any advantage at all to waiting for the market to get better, is there? And that's what E says. There really isn't any advantage at all to waiting for the market to get better, is there? So in fact, you know, there is an advantage, the truthfully. In fact, the advantage that you have now is there are so many homes for sale right now, finding the right home will be a lot easier in today's market. Does that make sense? So, so let me just convey the message again. First of all, they may have to sell at a discount in order to buy, but they're going to buy at a discount too, so they haven't really lost anything at all. And when the market does get better, the home they're going to purchase is going to appreciate just as much as the home that they're in if they decide to wait it out. So there really isn't any financial benefit at all. If there's any benefit or advantage, it's the fact that in today's market, they've got a ton of selections as a buyer. Whereas if they wait for the market to get better, well, not only would the property value you know, of the home that they have increased, but the prices of the homes they're trying to buy will also increase, but the number of choices they have in a booming market decreases dramatically. You know, and so this is what you're going to see. You know, although you may have to sell your home at a discount, your plan's to purchase another home, right, John? Well, do you expect that the home you'll purchase will be priced at a discount as well? Well, so the good news is, that, is this. If you sell at a discount and then you buy at a discount, well, we haven't really lost anything at all, have we? Can I tell you the better news? The better news is when the market does get better and we do return to an appreciating market, the home that you'll buy, it'll increase in value just as much as the home that you're in if you decide to stay. So there really isn't any advantage at all for waiting for the market to get better, is there? You know, in fact, there is an advantage, you know, to purchasing now. There are so many more homes for sale right now that finding the right home will be a lot easier in today's market. Does that make sense? And again, you wanted the script, now you have it. I've given you the message, now you've got the script to go with it for those of you that just assume memorize what to say. Now, these scripts are obviously version one because I just put a lot of these together. If you find any typos or anything like that, you know, don't panic, just let me know. Four types of sellers. How about the person that's actually purchasing a more expensive home? So here's a, a seller that's not just buying another home, but they're buying a more expensive home. So we start with the same philosophy. Well, listen, John, I understand that the market can be confusing, but here's the good news. And nobody is saying, here's the good news in today's market. You're going to sound different right there. But here's the good news. Although you may have to sell your home at a discount, your plan is to purchase another home, right? Same question. Well, yeah, of course. Well, John, do you expect the home that you'll purchase to be priced at a discount as well? Yeah, probably. Well, the good news is that although you'll have to sell at a discount, higher priced homes usually lose more value a lot faster than homes in your price range. So you're actually going to be able to buy a bigger home, or excuse me, you're actually going to be able to buy at a much bigger discount than you'd really need to sell. Can I tell you the better news? 
Okay, so the good news is although you'll have to sell at a discount, higher price homes usually lose value much faster than homes in their price range. So they're actually able to buy at a much bigger discount than they'd actually need to sell. But can I tell you the better news? Well, what's the better news? The better news is that when the market does get better and we return to appreciating levels, the home that you'll buy will increase in value far more than the home that you're in. The higher end homes always appreciate much more. So there really isn't any advantage at all in waiting for the market to get better, is there? You know, in fact, the advantage you have now is there are so many homes for sale that finding the right home will be a lot easier in today's market, and it's a great investment. Does that make sense? And then again, go to the closing sequence, you know, which is the sequence you'll take them through to set an appointment. So now you've got the words to explain to somebody that if they're buying up, it's a great investment. There's never been a better time. How about if they're cashing out? How about if they need to cut their losses, moving into a rental, moving into a retirement community, or even perhaps selling you know, and buying something smaller, moving from a home to a condo? Now, this isn't a great situation. This is the patient that has cancer, and we need to prescribe chemo, but the good news is they're not going to die. So it's not as positive of a message, but nonetheless, here's the script. So we're going to validate and appreciate first. Well, listen, John, I understand the market can be confusing and even frustrating, but how familiar are you with the condition of today's real estate market? I understand the market can be confusing. John, how familiar are you with today's real estate market, the condition of today's real estate market? So notice we're going to start by asking a question again. Now we're going to make a couple of points. A. Well, listen, then as you know, the listing inventory has continued to increase and there are actually a lot more homes coming for sale than there are new buyers coming into the market. What impact do you think that'll have on prices? What impact do you think that'll have on prices? So now we're going to say, hey, wait a minute. The message we're going to get to is that it's bad getting worse. You need to cut your losses and get out now. So how familiar are you with today's real estate market? Well, then as you know, or as you may know, or as you may not know, the listing inventory has continued to increase and there are actually a lot more buyers coming, or excuse me, there are a lot more homes, you know, coming onto the market than there are buyers for those homes. What type of impact do you think that's going to have on prices? Well, prices are probably going to go down. Yeah, well, John, right now we have a 10-month supply of inventory. That means if not a single home were listed in the next 10 months, we have enough inventory to last until September. So considering, considering the fact that more homes are coming on the market than actually selling each month, what are the chances the market's going to appreciate anytime soon? It doesn't look real positive. John, can I be honest with you? This is C. John, can I be honest with you? Yeah, go ahead. No, the reality is this. You know, it could come down to a bad price now or a worse price later. And then I'll go into the closing sequence. Okay, so that's how you're going to handle somebody who's cashing out. They can't quite deal with the fact that they're going to need to cut their losses. The inventory is continuing to grow. The buyers are continuing to be less than the new inventory hitting the market. What kind of impact do you think that'll have on prices? Notice I didn't tell them. Well, you know, inventory is still going up, so prices are still coming down. That's just my opinion. Well, inventory is continuing to grow, and as long as there are more listings than there are buyers for those homes, what kind of impact do you think that's going to have on prices? Well, I'm not really sure what that'll do to prices. Now, come on, John. Think about it for a minute. You're a smart man. You know, if the supply of homes continues to increase and there aren't nearly enough buyers for those homes, what does always happen to prices in this situation? Well, I guess they're going to come down. Not only are they going to come down, we already have a 10-month supply of inventory. We already have enough inventory to last us until September. So what are the chances the market's going to get better anytime soon? Can I be honest with you? It could really come down to this, a bad price now or a worse price later. You know, and then I go into the closing sequence based on their motivation. So there are a bunch of scripts there we've just covered for the last 34 minutes um, I hope that these scripts will give you not only an insight as to the way I think, not only a pattern of how you communicate through aligning with somebody, asking them a question, making a statement, asking another question, and then closing, 
But I also hope that it encourages you because you realize there truly are answers to the questions that people have in today's real estate market. And those answers aren't slick. They're not slippery. They're not salesy. They are simply knowing how to effectively communicate the realities of today's market and how to help somebody understand how they benefit from a course of action that you suggest. So obviously, we'll probably need to study up on the closing sequence. Some of you might be thinking, I don't have the answers to just about anything I run into. And every time I listen to one of these classes, I feel more insufficient than ever before. If you read on my website, FitzgeraldCoaching.com, if you actually read the description of the Over the Phone Training University, this OTPU, we have just under 400 people now involved in this program, you know, thanks to our new group from Richmond, Virginia from last week. If you actually read the description, you'll see that I'd written that accountability hasn't worked for so many of you in the past because your skill sets aren't to the place where you can be accountable to the things you're supposed to do. And this class, these series of classes, it's the only program in North America designed to give you the content on a topic-by-topic -topic level in, in a teaching format so that you can internalize, digest, understand, and work with the skills necessary so that if we hold you accountable, you'll know what you're doing out there. You know, that's really the bottom line. Don't be discouraged when you compare yourself to what you might hear on some of these classes. Be encouraged because now you get it, you work it in over the next couple of months, you're going to be extremely powerful in today's real estate market where most agents are getting out of the business every day. Well, guys, gals, um, it's Thanksgiving in the United States this week, and uh, we're sure thankful for each and every one of you being a part of what we do. For our Canadian friends, um, we want you to work hard this week and make up for the fact we're eating probably too much turkey. But in either case, we'll see you back here next week on Monday, 1030. Bye for now.